Hey everybody, this is an entry into the Oxford Handbook of Karl Marx by Patrick Murray of International Symposium on Marxist Theory fame. Um, I really highly recommend his book, Mismeasure of Wealth, which is a collection of essays. And, um... If you're ever in need of academic guidance, I'd recommend emailing him, because I emailed him, and he was a very extremely friendly man and very helpful to me. So, uh, amongst all the other people that I uh, emailed as well, Tony Smith was also very friendly to me. Seem like nice folks. Maybe they're bastards, who knows? Maybe they're serial killers. <laughs> Anyway, capital, a revolutionary social form. Let's read the abstract, because hey, why not? It'll probably repeat itself in the body of the essay, but capital is the fundamental concept of modern social theory because capital is the foundation of bourgeois society. Unlike produced means of production, capital is a specific social form of production. A vast gulf separates Marx from the mainstream notion that capital is produced means of production. In attention to production's social form, a feature of the, quote, bourgeois horizon, end quote, shackles social theory. It puts capital out of sight. Capital is value whose value is increased. Value is enigmatic, a strange, quote, super sensible, end quote, social form of wealth. Value results from commodity-producing labor. The topic of labor's social form falls outside economics. Capital shapes and subsumes society in various ways. Marx identifies several forms of subsumption, formal subsumption, real subsumption, and ideal subsumption, as well as, quote, hybrid forms, end quote. Commerce makes capitalist society appear classless. However, capital presupposes a class division of the means of production and subsistence. Crises are seated in the dichotomous character of commodities. End of abstract. Okay. Now we're going to read the excerpt. Now we're done the abstract. Now we're going to read the actual body of the essay. Give me one second real quick. Okay, that's it. I'm sitting outside right now, and it is extremely peaceful. I'm with my brother's dogs, and it's magic. Any user. Capital, Marx tells us, is the fundamental concept of modern social theory because capital is the foundation of bourgeois society. Quote, the exact development of the concept of capital, bracket is, and bracket necessary, since it is the fundamental concept of modern economics, just as capital itself is the foundation of bourgeois society. End quote, Marx. Unlike produced means of production, a factor of production common to all societies, capital is specific to those societies where the capitalist mode of production is dominant. Capital, a specific social form of production, constitutes those societies as capitalist. A vast gulf separates Marx's concept of capital from the mainstream notion that capital is any produced means of production. Simon Clark identifies the source of the breach. Quote, there was a scientific revolution in 19th century social thought. It was inaugurated by Marx's critique of the ideological foundations of classical political economy, which he located in the political economist's neglect of the social form of capitalist production. End quote. Clark, 1982. Neglect of the social form and purpose of production generates the illusion of an economy in general. A provisioning process where needs, wealth, labor, and production have no social form or specific purpose into which capitalist production disappears. Marx complains of David Ricardo's, quote, inability to grasp the specific form of bourgeois production, end quote, 
which, quote, arises from the obsession that bourgeois production is production as such, end quote, Marx. What will be referred to here as, quote, economics takes, quote, production as such, end quote, or an even broader topic as its object. In adopting the classical Ricardian labor theory of value, traditional Marxism fails to grasp the social forms constitutive of the capitalist provisioning process. It shares the classical universe of discourse, what Marx calls the, quote, bourgeois horizon, end quote. Radical economics is still economics. Marx breaks with economics. Marx's concept of capital cannot be developed from generally applicable categories such as means of production or labor. Obviousness tor excuse me, obliviousness towards the social form and purpose of production is a disaster for modern social theory. It puts the crucial category capital out of sight. Capital for Marx is the form of production that has as its purpose endless profit making and accumulation of capital. The emergence of capital marks a revolutionary new epoch in human history. Capital is a process, not a thing, though commodities C and money M, which are things constituted by specific social forms, may function as capital. Marx introduces the quote general formula of capital excuse me, for capital, end quote, in chapter four of the book Capital. He examines money, commodity, money, plus plus more money. An abridged version of the circuit of capital, representing capital only in so far as it appears as simple commodity circulation. As it moves through this circuit, quote, value suddenly presents itself as a self-moving substance which passes through a process of its own and for which commodities and money are both mere forms, end quote, Marx. Capital makes the movement of commodities and money its own. Capital encompasses a totality of socially specific categories involved in its circulation. We may well call them value categories, since they all have reference to value. They include the commodity, value, money, in its several forms, capital, constant and variable, wage, labor, surplus, value, valorization, productive labor, profit, interest, rent, and more. The quote, exact development of the concept of capital, end quote, requires developing these categ value categories across the three volumes of capital. Marx's concept of capital is cut from different cloth than the mainstream one, which clings to the asocial concept of capital that Marx ridiculed. Quote, no production is possible without an instrument of production, even if this instrument is only the hand. No production without stored up past labor, even if it is only the facility gathered together and concentrated in the hand of the savage by repeated practice. Capital is, among other things, also an instrument of production, also objectified past labor. Therefore, capital is a general eternal relation of nature. That is, if I leave out just the specific quality which alone makes the, quote, instrument of production, end quote, end quote, stored up labor, end quote, into capital. Marx. The mainstream concept of capital as produced means of production is generally applicable. No society can do without produced means of production. Marx has this concept, general concept too, but he understands why it is not the concept of capital. Conceived as simply as produced means of production, capital is not socially specific and therefore sheds no light on what makes capitalist production capitalist. The mainstream conception of capital cannot identify, much less understand, what constitutes capitalist production. Yet Marx's concept of capital has largely been passed over by social theory. The mainstream concept of capital is at once too wide and too narrow. It is too wide in that the produced means of production function as capital only under special social and historical conditions. The mainstream con stream concept extends to all social situations. It is too narrow because, one, it excludes money and financial instruments such as stocks and bonds from functioning as capital. They do not function directly as means of production. And two, it excludes commodities produced on a capitalist basis that are destined to be unproductively consumed rather than used as means of production. Strangely, according to the mainstream conception, capital is not traded in capital markets and the consumer commodities offered for sale by capitalist merchants are not capital.
What Marx terms, quote, money, end quote, capital, and much of what he calls commodity capital are excluded from the scope of the mainstream concept of capital. If Marx is right, contemporary social theory is missing the most important concept for understanding the modern world. Time for a drinky poo. Section 1. Placing Marx's concept of capital within the horizon of his thought. Considering three correlative topics helps us to place Marx's concept of capital within the horizon of his thought. One, his conception of historical materialism. Two, his criticism of the, quote, bourgeois horizon, end quote. And three, his criticism of separating production and distribution. One, in early... In early collaboration, Marx and Engels arrived at the idea of historical materialism. They point out that the historically specific social form and purpose of a provisioning process make it a way of life, not a mere means of survival. Quote, this mode of production, production zweiser, must not be considered simply as being the reproduction of the physical existence of the individuals. Rather, this mode of production is a definite form of activity of these individuals, a definite form of expressing their life, a definite mode of life, Lebensweise, on their part. End quote, Marx and Engels. Marx returns to this idea in the Grundrisse, quote, Whenever we speak of production, then, what is meant is always production at a definite stage of social development, production by social individuals, end quote. We can make some general observations about production, but, quote, there is no production in general, end quote. Those general observations include identifying the three factors of production, land, labor, and produced means of production. In acknowledging produced means of production as a general feature of the labor process, Marx does not identify those means with capital. No, wealth and production always have a constitutive social form and purpose. As factors of production, land, labor, and produced means of production no more exist in general than production does. In his critique of the, quote, Trinity formula, end quote, Marx shows how vulgar economics conflates the three factors of the production process, land, labor, and produced means of production with their capitalist forms and corresponding forms of revenue. Landed property, rent, wage, labor, wages, and capital, profit, interest. In capitalism, produced means of production are capital because of the role those means of production, those produced means of production, play in the circulation of capital. As the circulation of capital performs the trick of turning money into more money, Initial money plus extra money. Plus surplus money. I guess it would be a better word to use. I mean, I'm uh, discussing symbols. And then in, on the page it just says M plus delta M. But we all know that means money plus uh, surplus money. Mutating from money capital to productive capital to commodity capital and back to more money capital. When produced means of production do not function in this way, they are not capital. Marx states the kernel of historical materialism, quote, all production is appropriation of nature on the part of an individual within and through a specific form of society, end quote. This is a phenomenological claim. It asserts a necessity. Production is inseparable from its specific social form and purpose. The trouble with economics, with its asocial conception of capital as produced means of production, is its failure to recognize this phenomenological truth. Historical materialism adds an overlooked third question, i.e., what is the social form and purpose of wealth? To the familiar too, how much wealth is there? How is wealth distributed? With, its, with it comes the matching question, what is the social form and purpose of production? Marx addresses the third question starting with the first sentence of Capital, the book. His preliminary answer is that, where the capitalist mode of production is dominant, wealth takes the commodity form. Marx goes on to show that the generalization of the commodity form of wealth is one with the capitalist mode of production for which surplus value is the aim. Simple commodity circulation and the circulation of capital are mutually presupposing. As the output of capitalist production, the commodity is commodity capital, it functions as capital. 2. 
Marx challenges the, quote, bourgeois horizon, end quote, which he identifies as the mindset that contains, excuse me, that constrains political economy, much of modern philosophy, and many forms of socialism. Bourgeois thinking spins bifurcations, mind versus world, subjective versus objective, form versus content, concept versus object, and more. The bourgeois mindset is quick to treat as separable what can only be distinguished in thought. The target of Marx's early philosophical criticism is less German idealism and the previous materialism than the splitting of experience that takes these one-sided philosophy that makes these one-sided philosophies possible. Marx criticizes Proudhon's amalgamation of political economy, idealist philosophy, and socialism, writing to en Enenkov that Proudhon, quote, does not rise above the bourgeois horizon, end quote. Marx attributes the failures of political economy generally to its confinement to the bourgeois standpoint. Quote, Even its best representatives remained more, or less, remained more or less trapped in the world of illusions their criticism had dissolved, and nothing else is possible from the bourgeois standpoint. They all fell, therefore, more or less into inconsistencies, half-truths, and unresolved contradictions. End quote. Marx. Marx follows Hegel in rejecting the bifurcation between form and content. Quote, Form and content are a pair of determinations that are frequently employed in such a way that the content is considered as what is essential and independent, while the form, on the contrary, is inessential and dependent. This, against this, however, it must be remarked that in fact both of them are equally essential. End quote. Hegel. Marx repeatedly. Marx repeatedly employs this dialectical thought and the analogous one that the essence must appear as something other than itself in criticizing political economists. To cite two key examples, Marx argues that money is the necessary form of appearance of value and that surplus value necessarily appears as profit, interest, and rent. The bifurcations characteristic of thinking trapped within the bourgeois horizon lead it to be dismissive of forms and concepts since they are identified as purely subjective, whereas content and object are purely objective. Bourgeois thinking veers away from the Aristotelian understanding of forms and concepts as inseparable from content and object that Hegel and Marx excuse me, and concepts as inseparable from content and object that Hegel and Marx adopt. Marx praises Aristotle as that quote giant of thinking, end quote Denkeriza, end quote the great investigator who has the, who was the first to analyze the value form like so many other forms of thought, society, and nature, end quote. Bourgeois thinking loses the thread of this type of investigation, leading it to conceive of capital as a thing rather than a social form of production. 3. In the introduction to the Grundrisse, Marx systematically works through the general relations of production to distribution, exchange, and consumption, attacking, quote, the economic notion that the spheres of distribution and of production are independent, autonomous neighbors, end quote. On the contrary, Marx argues, quote, distribution is itself a product of production, not only in its object, but also in its form, in that the specific kind of participation in production determines the specific forms of distribution, end quote. Marx. Marx concludes, quote, that production, distribution, exchange, and consumption all form the members of a totality, distinctions within a unity, end quote. Here we have a phenomenological judgment. In a given social form of the provisioning process, production, distribution, exchange, and consumption are indistinguishable but inseparable. For this reason, accounts of Marx's theory of value that confine it either to the sphere of production or to that of circulation are one-sided. As Moish Piston puts it, quote, Value should not be understood merely as a category of the mode of distribution of commodities, Rather, it should be understood as a category of capitalist production itself, end quote. Pistone, 1993. There is no room within Marx's horizon of discourse for conceiving of capital merely as produced means of consumption. Capital, quote, must have its origin both in circulation and not in circulation, end quote. Marx returns to the topic of the relations of production and the relations of distribution late in Capital Three. In a powerful resume of Capital, he writes, quote, 
The scientific analysis of the capitalist mode of production proves that this is a mode of production of a particular kind in a specific historical determinacy. That the relations of production corresponding to this specific and historically determined mode of production have a specific historical and transitory character. And that finally, the relations of distribution are essentially identical with these relations of production. The reverse side of the same coin, so that two things share the same historically trans that the two things share the same historically transitory character. End quote. Marx. This concept of production and distribution as two sides of the same coin, which we may take as an articulation of the phenomenological point of historical materialism, rules out the mainstream conception of capital as strictly a matter of production, much less an immutable one. Marx exposes the ideological payoff of splitting production and distribution. Quote, production is supposedly represented, represented, see for example, John Stuart Mill, in distinction from, excuse me, Marx exposes the ideological payoff of splitting production and distribution. Quote, production is supposedly represented, see for example, John Stuart Mill, in distinction from distribution, etc., as framed in eternal natural laws independent of history. This is the occasion for passing off in an underhand way, bourgeois, relations as irrevocable natural laws of society in the abstract. This is a more or less conscious purpose of the whole proceeding. End quote. Marx. Marx imagines a world without capital on the mainstream conception that would be nonsense. Section 2. Capital is valorized value. Capital is value that is valorized. A value whose value is increased functions as capital. Marx frequently refers to capital as, quote, self-valorizing value, end quote, a phrase that calls for scrutiny since valorization depends on capital's ability to extract surplus labor from wage workers. To grasp capital, we must first grasp value, a point that Jarius Banaji stresses, quote, the whole understanding of what capital is depends crucially on the exposition of the theory of value, end quote. Banaji, 2015. Marx warns us of the difficulty involved, quote, value, therefore, does not have its description branded on its forehead. Value, rather, transforms every product of labor into a social hieroglyphic, end quote. Value is enigma, is an enigma, uh, value is enigmatic, <laughs> quote, not an atom of matter enters into the objectivity of commodities as values. We may twist and turn a single commodity as we wish. It remains impossible to grasp that commodity as a thing possessing value, end quote. Marx. The value of a commodity does appear, but like a ventriloquist voice, it manifests itself in another body, that of its opposite value form, money. The difficulties in understanding value lead to setting the task aside, quote, it is naturally still more convenient to understand by value nothing at all. Then one can without difficulty subsume everything under this category, end quote. Economics textbooks take advantage of this convenience while random discussion of, quote, adding value, end quote, is widespread. Mainstream social theory snubs value or understands it as something not socially specific. Marx continues to be misinterpreted as adopting the classical Ricardian labor theory of value and driving it to the radical conclusion that capitalists exploit wage workers as the source of surplus value, profit. In the classical theory, value is embodied labor, making it a trans-historical concept. Neo-Ricardian's, Srafian, excuse me, Neo-Ricardian, Srafian Marxism, likewise offers an ahistorical theory of prices of production and rate of profit that is based on, quote, physically specified conditions of production, end quote, end quote, real wages, end quote. Michio Morishima writes, quote, values are determined only by technological coefficients. They are independent of the market, the class structure of society, taxes, and so on, end quote. Jesus Christ. God, that's so off base. 
Taking Marx to hold the classical labor theory of value, or a Sarafian alternative, rests on deep misconceptions. Marx's theory of value is about the social form of labor in capitalism. Value is purely social. Whereas the topic of the social form of labor lies out the di outside the discourse of economics. Unlike embodied labor, value for Marx is historically specific and strange. Value is the supersensible social objectivity created by commodity producing labor, not just any sort social sort of labor. Value is the supersensible social objectivity created by commodity producing labor, not just social sort any social sort of labor, Jesus Christ. Try to correct one mistake and made another. The failure to recognize how capitalist society is enchanted results from the denial of the objectivity of value, and that it when with it the denial of the fetish character of the commodity, money and capital. What comes with ignoring the social specificity of value and the labor that produces it? Excuse me. Space now. The failure to recognize how capitalist society is enchanted results from the denial of the objectivity of value, and with it, the denial of the fetish character of the commodity, money, and capital that comes with ignoring the social specificity of value and the labor that produces it. Because of the social form that labor takes in capitalist production, namely, privately undertaken production for sale in the marketplace, value is necessarily expressed in something other than itself, money, price, which confirms the historically this is the historical specificity of value. Neither the classical Ricardian labor theory of value nor a Srafian alternative accounts either for the social and historical specificity of value or for the necessity that value be expressed in money. John Elster questions Marx's reasoning in adopting abstract labor as the substance of value. He points out that not all commodities are products of labor and that Marx fails to consider, quote, the potential for human want satisfaction or utility or use value, end quote, which is also wrong. Elster's suggestion faces the previous two objections and one more, since, quote, utility or use value, end quote, is nothing historically specific. It cannot account for the historical specificity of value. Value belongs to the double character of wealth in capitalist societies. Commodities are use values and values. To collapse value into use value is to eliminate the commodity's double character and thereby excise its social form. Since there is no necessity to express, quote, utility or usefulness, end quote, in money, utility cannot be the substance of value. Elster writes as if it did not occur to Marx that, quote, utility or use value, end quote, might be the substance of value. Marx does not overlook it. Rather, he immediately rules it out, quote, but clearly the exchange relation of commodities is characterized precisely by its abstraction from their use values. As exchange values, they do not contain an atom of use value, end quote. Use value cannot be the substance of value when value abstracts absolutely from use value. Marx and Engels scoffed at utility. Quote, this apparently metaphysical abstraction arises from the fact that in modern bourgeois society, all relations are subordinated in practice to one abstract monetary commercial relation, end quote. Marx and Engels. Utility is a shadow cast by capital. Utility does not reveal value substance. It masks value and the exploitation involved in extracting surplus value. Marx follows Aristotle in rejecting any metric for usefulness as utility claims to supply. Utility is a misconception of usefulness. Quote, the usefulness of a thing makes it a use value, but this usefulness does not dangle in mid-air. It is conditioned by the physical properties of the commodity and has no existence apart from the physical properties of the commodity. End quote. Marx. Since utility abstracts from the useful properties of things, it purports to, quote, dangle in mid-air, end quote. It has nothing to refer to. As such, utility is a pseudo-concept. How poorly Marx's theory of value is grasped is one measure of how little his concept of capital is understood.
Section 3. How Capital Shapes and Subsumes Capital's reach is vast. Its powers are differentiated. Quote, capital is the all-dominating economic power of bourgeois society, end quote, Marx. Capital shapes and subsumes bourgeois society in various ways and to different degrees. It directly subsumes commerce, industry, and finance, but shaping where it does not subsume. Capital, capital posits other excuse me, capital posits other social spheres, the domestic sphere, the for-profit firm, and the state. Because capital presupposes that labor generally takes the form of free wage labor, capital posits a social sphere, the domestic sphere, where laborers can be born and reared, live and reproduce. It cannot be formally subsumed under capital, since workers would then be owned by capital and not free to sell their labor power. Marx notes that the Marx notes the irony that quote labor is systematically divided in every factory, but the workers do not bring about this division by exchanging their individual products. Only the products of mutually independent acts of labor performed in isolation can confront each other as commodities. End quote. Marx. For profit firms produce commodities for the market, but within the firm, goods and services are not bought and sold. Though the firm answers to the market within the firm, there must be social relations and modes of organization other than market relations. With the concentration and centralization that comes with capital's accumulation, firms grow and enlarge this social sphere. Capital posits the state as a formally independent social sphere capable of enforcing contracts and protecting property rights, regulating commerce and finance, solving various collective action problems, and carrying out an expanding list of other functions. Though the capitalist state, the state posited by capital, must concern itself with capital's accumulation, capital accumulation is not its direct purpose. Social relations and the organization of tasks take their own forms within the state. The complexity of these modern social the complexity of these modern social spheres posited by capital give rise to cross pressures and contradictions. Section three point one: Forms of subsumption of labor under capital. Marx's ideas about the subsumption of labor under capital, which have become better known in recent decades, help us to recognize capital to be a momentous social form and to articulate its implications. Because Marx is widely thought to be a radical political economist, his fundamental critique of economics for its neglect of specific social forms and, per me, and purposes get lost. But there is an evident mismatch between Marx's rubric of subsumption and political economy. To be something that labor can be subsumed under, capital must be a social form, not a thing. Quote, Just as it is convenient for the apologists of capital to confuse capital with the use value in which capital exists, and to call use value as such capital, in order to present capital as an eternal factor of production, as a relation independent of all social forms, imminent in every labor process, hence imminent in the labor process in general, so equally does it happen that it suits Messrs. the economists. Two, forget the essential feature of capital, namely that capital is value positing itself as value, not only self-preserving, but at the same time self-multiplying value. End quote. Marx. If capital is conceived of as a thing, as a, quote, use value as such, end quote, not a social form, the idea of subsuming labor under capital makes no sense. The failure to recognize capital as a potent social form is a deep error of mainstream social theory. But the breakdown begins with the failure to grasp value. Value and capital, value that preserves and multiplies itself, are epochal social forms under which wealth, labor, and production are subsumed in constituting capitalist societies. Section 3.2 Formal and Real Subsumption Under Capital Marx identifies several different forms of subsumption under capital. The two best known, they play a central role in capital under the rubrics of absolute and relative surplus value, are formal and real subsumption of labor under capital. When labor is subsumed under capital, workers enter a web of distinct social relations with the formal subsumption of labor under capital. One, the capitalist oversees the labor process, and two, the capitalist owns the products. 
owning the product, the capitalist owns the surplus value it bears. Because the relationship between capitalist and wage labor is purely financial, quote, the process of exploitation is stripped of every patriarchal, political, or even religious cloak, end quote. Marx, a measure of self-respect comes with the wage, quote, it is the worker himself who converts the money into whatever use values he desires. It is he who buys commodities as he wishes and as, excuse me, and as the owner of money, as the buyer of goods, he stands in precisely the same relationship to the sellers of goods as any other buyer, end quote. Working for pay, workers can develop senses of equality, responsibility, self-control, and indifference to their work. Merely formal subsumption does not transform production materially or technically. Marx does not identify a historical period of merely formal subsumption. Real subsumption of labor under capital presupposes formal subsumption, but real subsumption of labor under capital involves materially or technically transforming production for the sake of surplus value. Bluntly put, quote, the machine is a means for producing surplus value, end quote. This put it's modern technology in an unsettling light, exposing modern technology as specifically capitalist. It challenges both a technological conception of historical materialism, which separates technology, forces from, of production, from specific social forms and purposes, and a conception of revolution limited to transferring ownership of the means of production. 3.3. Ideal subsumption under capital. Marx, call, Marx calls attention to ideal subsumption under capital in this expression of capital's power over our imaginations. Production that is not formally subsumed under capital is thought of as it were. It is thought of as if it were. Failure to identify what is specific to capitalist production can lead to ideally subsuming non-capitalist production under capital. Quote, the determinate social character of the means of production in capitalist production, expressing a particular production relation, has so grown together with and in the mode of thought of bourgeois society, is so separable. Excuse me, I'm spacing out. Quote, the determinate social character of the means of production in capitalist production, expressing a particular production relation, has so grown together with and in the mode of thought of bourgeois society, is so inseparable from the material existence of these means of production as means of production, that the same determinateness, categorical determinateness, is assumed even where the relation is in direct contradiction to it. End quote. Marx catches John Stuart Mill in contra direct contra to it, contradiction to it, end quote Marx. Marx catches John Stuart Mill in a striking example of this. Mill insists on talking about profit where there is no buying or selling, no money. Thinking of someone as, quote, self-employed, end quote, is an everyday variety of ideal subsumption. Goods and services do not function as commodity capital within a firm, but the demands of profit-making put pressure on firms to ideally subsume departments organizing them and handling their accounting as if they were independent capitalist firms. Section 3.4 Subsumption of pre-capitalist commercial forms under capital. Capital subsumes pre-capitalist commercial forms, transforming them. Tony Smith states the point well. Quote, Commodities, money, profits, and so on can all be found in pre-capitalist societies. One of Marx's fundamental insights is that these were not the same social forms as commodities, money, and profits in capitalism, although we use the same words. In Capital, the book, Marx examines these social forms insofar as these social forms are moments of a social order whose organizing principle is the self-valorization of value. This was not the organizing principle of pre-capitalist societies, end quote. Tony Smith, 1990. This is an important caution regarding what Marx is examining in Capital. 3.5 Hybrid Forms Marx mentions hybrid forms where a pre-capitalist kind of capital exercises power over production that is not formally subsumed. In these hybrid forms, quote, no capital exists yet in the strict sense of the word, end, cap, end quote, for only capital that, quote, has taken control of production 
is the basis of a historical mode of, pro of social production of its own, end quote, Marx. Marx recognizes two types of hybrid subsumption, one he calls, quote, transitional, end quote, Uber Gang's form, and the other he calls, quote, accompanying, end quote, Nebin's form. The former is a bridge to modern capitalist social relations. The two subtypes of traditional hybrid subsumption stand out. In one hybrid form, producers do not work under the direct control of capital, but borrow from a capitalist lender. In another, producers sell to a capitalist merchant. The accompanying type of hybrid subsumption refers to forms that continue to appear in established capitalism. Hybrid subsumption continues in developed capitalist societies, as we see in the, quote, gig economy, end quote. Section 4. Oh, this is an exciting title. The, quote, qualitative sociological, end quote, dimension of value and capital. Isaac Illich Rubin observed, quote, the basic error of the majority of Marx's critics consists of their complete failure to grasp the qualitative sociological side of Marx's theory of value, end quote. That error results from mistaking Marx's theory of value, which is a theory of the social form that labor takes in capitalist production, with the theory that value is simply embodied labor. When labor is understood in the latter general way, there is no conceptual basis for a, quote, qualitative sociological, end quote, dimension. Value, as Marx conceives of it, is socially and historically specific. That provides traction for, quote, qualitative sociological, end quote, inquiries. Section 4.1. The kind of social power that value packs. Let us look into the peculiar kind of social power that value packs. Purchasing power. None of the following, quote, qualitative sociological, end quote, features are available on a theory that attributes value to, quote, labor, end quote. One. Value's power is abstract and homogeneous. It does not spring from material characteristics of commodities or money or of buyers or sellers. Indifferent to particularity, value's power is a matter of how much. Value's homogeneity arises from how capital treats human labor. Quote, the labor of every individual, insofar as it manifests itself in exchange values, possesses this social character of equality. End quote. Marx. Two, value is a, quote, radical leveler, end quote. Anyone can produce value and anyone can be a buyer or seller of commodities. Value's power is available in principle to anyone. Three, the leveling power of value threatens the social bonds of non-capitalist societies and institutions. Value is solvent, excuse me, is a solvent, quote, all that is solid melts into air, all that is holy is profaned, end quote, Marx. Martha Campbell echoes Marx, quote, because as value, social interdependence is abstract and embodied as money. Atomism is the way people relate to each other, end quote. Martha Campbell, 2004. Atomism is not the absence of sociality, but rather a seemingly asocial variation of sociality. Quote, atomism combines the contradictory aspects of the, quote, exclusively individual, end quote, and the, quote, exclusively social, end quote. End quote. Martha Campbell. Four. Value social power is generally held privately and directed to private ends whose relation to the common good is contingent. Five. Value's power is borne by things. There lies the fetish character of the commodity and money. Value's power is carried like a charm. Quote, the power that each individual exercises over the activity of others or over social wealth exists in him as the owner of exchange values, of money. He carries his social power as also his connection with society in his pocket, end quote. Marx. Six, values power is ordinarily transferable. This enables capital to centralize through mergers and acquisitions. Fiat can buy Chrysler. 7. 
Purchasing power cannot be preemptory. It requires the voluntary, if constrained, cooperation of other property holders. That includes wage laborers as the rightful owners of their own labor power. 8. Value, including the value of money, is subject to revaluations including unpredictable and drastic devaluations in crises. 9. Value appears to be natural, not social. Quote, it is a characteristic feature of labor which posits exchange value, bracket, value, end bracket, that it causes the social relations of individuals to appear as the perverted form of a social relationship between things, end quote. While it is fetishism to treat this, quote, perverted form, end quote, as natural, the truth remains that, quote, the social relations between their private labors appears as what those social relations are, i.e. they do not appear as direct social relations between persons in their work, but rather as material, dinglich, relations between persons and social relations between things, end quote. Value is a self-concealing form of sociality. These, quote, sociological features, end quote, of value, taken on the conceptual level of simple commodity circulation, pertain to capital. For capital is value that is valorized. Capital undergirds the law of value. Quote, the majority of products take the form of commodities, end quote, only, quote, on the basis of one particular mode of production, the capitalist one, end quote. Because, quote, surplus value cannot arise from circulation, something must take place in the background which is not visible in the circulation itself, end quote. That something is capitalist production. When in commodity exchange, quote, all is, quote, lovely, end quote, when we come to capital, quote, it will end in terror, bracket, shrekin, end bracket, and that is a consequence of the law of equivalence, end quote. Marx harkens back to Hegel's account of how the Enlightenment ends in an alarming sequence going from utility to absolute freedom to terror, bracket, shrekin, end bracket, as a consequence of the abstract form of consciousness, pure insight that impels it. Where Hegel warns, quote, Make abstractions hold good in actuality means to destroy actuality, end quote. Marx calls capitalism, quote, rule by abstractions, end quote. Marx's chilling association of capital with terror highlights the limitations of criticisms of social, so, excuse me, of commercial society that confine themselves to money and commodities. Simple commodity circulation is, for Marx, capital's cheery face. But Marx argues that simple commodity circulation presupposes production on a capitalist basis. Marx characterizes simple commodity circulation as, quote, an abstract sphere of the bourgeois process of production as a whole, which through its own determination shows itself to be a moment, a mere form of appearance of some deeper process lying behind it, even resulting from it and producing it, end quote. Consider, in a society where wealth generally takes the commodity form, that must what must production begin with? Marx reasons that production must start with money in order to purchase everything needed for production. <clears throat> but a circuit of production that starts with a quantity of money is pointless if it ends with the same quantity. No, the circuit must be money purchasing commodities which are sold for that money spent on those commodities plus more money. The circuit of capital. Consumption of commodities and capitalist production are complementary phenomena. No surplus value, no value. The quote sociological features end quote of Marx's theory of value must be expanded to include those that come with the shift to capital. Section 4.2. Capital and Class. Simple commodity circulation gives capitalist society the appearance of being classless. With irony, Marx describes it as, quote, a very Eden of the innate rights of man, the exclusive realm of freedom, equality, property, and Bentham, end quote.
The way that capital shapes the modern state and civil society privatizes classifications such as caste, classes, and estates, tending to eliminate hereditary political status and privilege. Marx calls capital shaping the, quote, political revolution, end quote. Quote, the political revolution is the revolution of civil society. The political revolution made the political state the business of all, that is, an actual state. This revolution inevitably destroyed all estates, corporations, guilds, and privileges. The pro political revolution thereby abolished the political character of civil society, end quote. Um, Ellen Mason, Marx, Ellen Mason's Wood talks about, you know, as, as do other people, about capitalism is uniquely, uniquely, uh, unique uh, separation of the political and the economic. Um, obviously, they're not, uh, these are separations of distinction. Um, they presuppose one another, but uh, in capitalist society, the political and the economic, but within capitalism, their uh, separation, um, uh, I guess, surplus extraction now becomes economic as opposed to extra economic, in most cases, of course. Anyway. Capitalist society is classless in a sense. Class is neither politically sanctioned nor hereditary. But that is not the whole story any more than commodity circulation is. To account for the circulation of capital, Marx introduces considerations that were out of place when examining commodity circulation in abstraction from production. In the formerly egalitarian space of the market, social class and the nature of the commodities being exchanged can be disregarded, but they figure into the constitution of capital. Only the sale of labor power by free wage laborers and its consumption by capitalists can explain how capital, a value that increases its value, is possible. Capital presupposes a class division of specific use values such that the means of production and subsistence are in the hands of the capitalist class, while workers own only their labor power, and capital's reproduction requires renewing these class relations. Quote, the capital relation presupposes a complete separation between the workers and the ownership of the conditions for the realization of the workers' labor. As soon as capitalist production stands on its own feet, it not only maintains this separation, but reproduces this separation between the workers and the ownership of the conditions for the realization of their labor on a constantly extending scale, end quote, Marx. Though the class relation between free wage laborers and capitalists is constitutive of capital, the non-political status of these classes remains. The inescapable conflicts between wage laborers and capitalists over wages, the workday, and the humanity of working conditions are relegated to the private sphere. Classes are often thought of in terms of how wealth, whether means of production or of subsistence, is distributed, but without paying attention to the social form or purpose of that wealth. Against that, Marx insists, quote, classes in turn are an empty phrase if I am not familiar with the elements of on which they rest, e.g., wage labor, capital, etc., end quote, Marx. A Marxian theory of class and capitalist society presupposes a critical theory of value, money, wage, labor, capital, etc. Tony Smith points out that the capitalist class is a placeholder, Capital may be personified and its functions carried out in various ways. Quote, Marx's critique is of capital, not capitalists. The latter, the capitalists, are relevant to his theory only insofar as the capitalists function as personifications of capital. In principle, it is possible for a society without capitalists to still be subject to the alien logic of capital. End quote. Smith. Again considered from the mainstream again considered from the mainstream conception of capital as produced means of production, the idea of a critique of capital makes no sense. Section five Capital is crisis prone. The commodity with the commodity's dichotomous character is the seed of capital's crisis potentials and tendencies. 
the contradictory character of the commodity presents itself in the necessary polar expression of a commodity's value in money. This polarity harbors an antagonism that opens capitalism to crises. Quote, it is by no means self-evident that the form of direct and universal exchangeability, money, is an antagonistic form, as inseparable from money's opposite, commodity. The form of non-direct exchangeability, as the positivity of one pole of a magnet is from the negativity of the other pole, end quote. Marx. Money splits exchange in two. The seller who wants to buy first must sell. The buyer who wants to sell first must buy. And, quote, it is possible that consonance between them may now be fully attained only by passing through the most extreme dissonances, end quote. Marx. Quote, commodities are in love with money, end quote. But, quote, the course of true love never did run smooth, end quote. In commercial, quote, dissonances, end quote, lies a potential for crisis, not a tendency. Crises, where the commodity's love of money goes unrequited, could involve overproduction or underconsumption or mismatches in the proportion of production goods to consumer goods. The risk of speculative bubbles lies in the price form. Price expresses value but is not value. Quote, the possibility, therefore, of a quantitative incongruity, incongruity between price and magnitude of value i.e., the possibility that the price may diverge from the magnitude of value, is inherent in the price form itself, end quote. Marx. The fact that value of money fluctuates makes inflation and deflation possible, and with inflation and deflation, the prospect of economic turmoil. Crisis potentials are native to the commodity form. Credit is incipient in commodity exchange. Payment and delivery naturally diverge, giving rise to money as a means of payment. Credit leverages the accumulation of capital. At first, the credit system draws together, quote, by invisible threads, and quote, scattered funds and makes those scattered funds available to capitalists, but credit, quote, soon becomes a new and terrible weapon in the battle of competition and is finally transformed into an enormous social mechanism for the centralization of capitals, end quote. Martha Campbell notes, quote, The credit system is, in Marx's view, so essential that no presentation of capital would be complete without it, end quote. Martha Campbell. The credit system, however, is a flashpoint for crises which can jeopardize capital's financial architecture and capital's accumulation. Marx calls the law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall, quote, the most important law of modern political economy, end quote. Its roots lie in the way that labor is socially validated, which results in the, quote, value treadmill, end quote. Because labor is socially validated as abstract labor, while productive power is a concrete feature of labor, the level of productive power does not affect the quantity of value. As labor's productive power increases, more useful things are produced per hour, but no more value. This divergence leads to what Moisha Pastone calls, quote, shearing pressures, end quote. As labor, times become, labor time becomes increasingly dissociated from the mass of produced material wealth. As commodities get cheaper, the capitalist strategy of relative surplus value surfaces. Increasing labor's productive power cheapens the commodities bought by workers and lowers the value of their labor power. Increasing surplus value. But pursuing relative surplus value tends to make production more capital intensive, to raise the organic composition of capital, which tends to lower the rate of profit. Capital success in raising the productive power of labor threatens it. Capital becomes its own bearer. Six. Conclusion. Social theory needs good concepts, but capital covers its tracks. Capital is remarkable for how it shapes the way we think about it, in particular for how it covers its tracks. As Martha Campbell puts it, quote, what is for Marx the extraordinary feature of economic activity in capitalism, end quote, is, quote, that it claims to create wealth, quote, pure and simple, end quote, and 
to be organized by this purpose, end quote. Martha Campbell. Capital naturally creates the, quote, illusion of the economic, end quote. That illusion of production in general projects the socially barren landscape in which the pseudo-concepts of the, quote, economic, quote, utility, and, quote, instrumental reason and action, end quote, spring up. Social theory needs good fundamental concepts. With his critique of political economy, Marx pioneered key concepts needed to understand capital and the modern world. The commodity, money, value, wage, labor, surplus value, profit, interest, rent, and more. Unfortunately, Marx's categories have been overlooked, misinterpreted, or dismissed, and shadows of capital, quote, the economic, end quote, utility and instrumental reason and action have taken their place.